most people don't feel great. Like they don't feel like, hey, I'm, realistically, they don't, you know, unless you're Napoleon or something, you don't really feel like, <laughs> hey, I am truly great. They might feel like I did a great thing, or uh, I'm having a good week, or hey, I'm doing okay. But greatness is almost always in the eye of the beholder. And I remember hearing an interview with Paul McCartney once, and he said, you know, it occurred to me uh, in the 70s that I feel kind of insecure. And he said, if I feel insecure, I'm a beetle. If I feel insecure, <laughs> imagine how everybody feels. Everybody feels insecure. And, you know, they face the day and they realize, you know, they're doing stupid stuff or they, you know, they don't know how it's going to go. Everybody feels that lack of greatness and insecurity to some degree. So, so a long time ago, I tried to recognize that um, the, the things that are going to be externally judged as great are going to happen really rarely in your life, at, at best. They sure aren't going to happen, you know, even monthly, maybe not even annually. And so you had better find a different standard for recognizing self-worth and success than the big shiny moments in your life, the greatness. And then if you get some of those big shiny moments that someone else lauds and someone says, you know, you're great or you're a hero, then that's wonderful. But if that's what you were counting on, or if that's what you needed, or if that's the only one that gave you self-worth, you're going to lead a miserable life, or at least a generically unhappy one, because you're not going to feel, um, you're not going to feel like you succeeded on, on a regular basis. And so I, I lowered my standards a lot, and I said, I, I am going to try and feel successful all the time. You know, if what we're doing is, is going to buy bicycle parts, then let's let's have fun buying bicycle parts and let's think about it and what do we really need and let's look and let's let's this is a small task and you can solve this task many different ways but let's try and do it so it's a pleasant process at the end of it we come out of it and every time we look at that bicycle part for the next five years you can remember to yourself hey that was a really good thing I did and I feel good about it and every single tiny little obstacle then becomes a victory and becomes something that you internalize as feeling somewhat great about and then when you get a great big one, it puts it into perspective. Um, one of the examples I use in the book is, uh, is building a dock. And uh, at our cottage, it was the stupidest thing. Uh, our, there were two cottagers that were having a feud for a long time. These people bought a cottage, and the, the previous cottage owner said, you can't come on our dock. And people have been coming on the dock all the time. So we can't come on your dock. No, nope, sorry, you can't use our dock. I'm like, Finally, they said, okay, well, we're going to build our own dock one inch north of your dock. <laughs> so there are these two docks with a one-inch gap up the middle next to each other, out to their boats. So we buy this cottage. We're looking at it going, what's up with the dock? What, what happened here? So the neighbor's kind of, you know, shame-faced. He says, well, you know, we couldn't get along, and the previous owners weren't very nice, and so we, we had to build our own dock. And now, of course, the docks have shifted over time a little bit, and there's some three-inch gaps and touching gaps, and it's a hazard. So we decided, um, okay. Let's just um, build a new dock. Let's you know, put together the structures. And with, uh, initially, we were just going to repair it. But then Helena said, if you're going to build a dock, build a dock. <laughs> so we stripped the whole thing out. And over about a month period, the July of whatever that year that was, 06 or 07, we rebuilt the whole dock. And it became the project for, for that summer. And, uh, I feel, and the dock came out great. And my neighbor and I, we have now an annual joining of the dock party. You know, <laughs> You know, it, it's like we solved the peace problem in, in the Middle East, you know? And, uh, and, but it, it, it's an island event, everybody comes to it, and we, every time I walk in that dock, I just feel like I won. And, and to me, fixing that problem and doing a nice job of it and solving it was, I take just as much pride as when I built the docking module on Tamir or the other things that we did. To me, those victories are just as big and just as important to me. And so if someone stops me in the street here and says, wow, great job on X, you know, space oddity or commanding the spaceship or singing a song with Ed Robertson or whatever, that's great. But it's not what, um, it's not how I try and measure my self-worth.